Most cults out there claim that they have personal revelation from God, and therefore they are to be trusted and submitted to above all others. And because they have that one truth from God, their writings and teachings are seen as scripture. Welcome, this is People of the Free Gift, where we ground believers in their identity in Christ and equip them to reach those caught in religion. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any future content regarding the cults and how to share the gospel with them. And so, like I said, we are breaking down, our, we're going on a third wave through my book, Sharing Jesus with the Cults, available on Amazon, it's paperback, or Kindle. Wave one, we just went through each section in an overview. Wave two, we went and broke down specific chapter or chapter clumps, and uh, we dealt with that. And this time, I'm going through and seeing what the most popular material from all of that was and breaking that down even further. And so we're breaking down the common characteristics of cults and cult leaders. And last, yesterday, we talked about how they claim that the Bible cannot be trusted. And we talked about all the different ways in which the groups that I discuss in the book do that. Today, we're going to talk about the claim to personal revelation from God. And because of that claim, claiming that they are the one true church, claiming that they have writings and talks that are equivalent and in some ways superior to the Bible, to scripture that has already been revealed to us. And so let's go ahead and break that down. First of all, the claim to personal revelation from God, and therefore they are to be trusted and submitted to more than any other group and any other individual. And so let's break this down. For Mormons, they obviously have the Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenants, and Pearl of Great Price as additional scriptures, which uh, just a breakdown of that Book of Mormon, they claim was the ancient writings of um, Israelites that came over to the Americas, and they had their own history separate and distinct, and then they had, it culminates with an appearance of Jesus in the Americas after his appearance in Israel and the Middle East. And so that is that. And Doctrine and Covenants is entirely revelations received by Joseph Smith and a few others um, in which it talks about how the church should be organized. It talks about uh, some, in cases, predictive prophecies. In some cases, it's just refining and specifying doctrine and what they believe and what they were going to believe moving forward as a church. And then the Pearl of the Great Price, it was actually... Um, Egyptian artifacts that came through the town and uh, Joseph Smith purchased a few of them and claimed that they were the writings of Abraham and Moses and then he translated those and they became the pearl of great price. But they also have a living prophet, and they believe it's essential to be the one true church that you have to have a living prophet here on this earth. And they believe that that living prophet, as well as the apostles, uh, have the authority, and especially a general conference or when they write in official writings, that they have the ability to speak in the same authority as the as biblical apostles and prophets, and that their writings and their talks should be seen as scripture and authoritative. And even if they say something that contradicts something in the past, that means that God has changed his mind and he is doing something differently here in the future. Going on, the Watchtower has their... Um, the Watchtower is the organization that speaks for God. You know, there are a group of guys and elders in Brooklyn, New York, that speak on the behalf of God for the Jehovah's Witnesses. And they uh, speak through the Watchtower magazine, through the Awake magazines, as well as other authoritative sources. And these things are literally rehearse. When they go to church, these things, they are reading these articles and they are reciting them back and forth in uh, enacting uh, their conversations they're going to have when they go out and do their mandatory door-to-door -door witnessing. 
Okay, and so they are encouraged that these are the only writings that you should consult, and uh, only our interpretation of the scripture is authoritative, and so that's what you should go out, and that's what you can declare with authority, and you shouldn't deviate from that, you shouldn't question that, or anything of the nature. Uh, Scientology has Dianetics, which was the first uh, official book that was written by L. Ron Hubbard in relation to Scientology, and it outlines the belief system as well as the practice of Scientology. And it is, in a very, way, a very real way, the scriptures of Scientology. Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures was written by Mary Baker Eddy of Christian Science. And it teaches uh, Christianity as a practice of divine healing. And it teaches you uh, a, re a redefinition of all of the biblical terminology that we use as Christians. Ellen G. White was seen as a prophet by the Seventh-day Adventist Church and that she was fulfilling in the last days the role of the gift of prophecy. And her writings are seen on the same level as scripture for the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And so all of the, the doctrines that she taught that we've gone into in our videos about them are seen on the same level as scripture. And then you have in the NAR, the New Apostolic Reformation, modern day apostles and prophets. And in very much in the same way as the LDS Church, they might not have official offices or even an official organization. But these men are recognized within this movement and they have the authority. They believe in such a, in a biblical sense to unite the church and do supernatural works and wonders and to actually speak on behalf of God. And they believe, they claim many of them to have visited angels, visited God, visited heaven, and um, have these personal experiences uh, related to that. And they believe that only when the entire church has submitted to an, an our apostle will there be the unity of the faith in which then Jesus can come back um, and also when they've taken over the seven mountains of influence and in culture uh, that they, God has revealed to them. So the second way in which they do this, they have the one truth from God and more than likely their writings and teachings are seen as scripture. And so uh, the LDS um, be, believe that they're the one true church because they have the priesthood authority that was established all the way in the Old Testament and went through Jesus. Jesus conferred it on his apostles, but they did not pass it on before Jesus before their death. And so the, the church was apostate for you know some 1,500 at least years, and to, in which then Joseph Smith. And uh, Oliver Cowder, I believe, had uh, John the Baptist came and restored the Aaronic priesthood to them. And then James, Peter, and John came and restored the uh, Melchizedek priesthood, which they believe is something that believers are supposed to have. Um, and he, they restored the priesthood. So because they are the only church that has the priesthood authority to act in God's name and on his behalf, they are the only ones you can baptize, and baptism is essential for you to become you know, a follower, a member of the church, and then um, they have the ordinances and rituals and the temple ceremonies and everything else that enables one to ultimately go to the celestial kingdom and ultimately to become a god of their own uh, planet and spirit children as well. And so the Jehovah's Witnesses have their right belief about Jehovah, and they believe that that separates them out as the only true believers that are on the face of the earth. Scientology uh, says that all outsiders are to be pitied, and I believe they refer to us as wogs or something of that nature. Uh, and then Christian science says it's a restoration of Jesus' church as a center for divine healing. And they believe that they are the only ones who are teaching this correctly, practicing it correctly, and so that would make them the one true church. And then you have the International Church of Christ, which says that insists that believers must be baptized by immersion, by 
a, a, an authorized member of the International Church of Christ in order for their baptism to be valid, in order for them to be saved. And then you have the Seventh-day Adventist Church that says that they are the only ones who practice rightly on the Sabbath. Um, and then I would also say the, the United Pentecostal Church International also believes that they are the only ones who are baptizing rightly because they believe you must be baptized in the name of Jesus only. And I would say by a member of an IC or by a UPCI uh, church member, an authorized uh, member in order to be saved and have a right relationship with God. And they would also believe that you have to speak in tongues uh, when that happens in order for that to be valid. And so those are the ways in which cults separate themselves as unique, distinct, and then make uh, everybody submissive to their leadership and looking to their words, their teachings, their doctrines apart from the Bible. So if there's insights or questions that you have from this video that you would like to share or ask, then please do so in the comments down below. And I'll be choosing some of those for the weekly Q&A at the end of this week. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up on this video. If you like the content for today, share this with others who are in your life who want to share the gospel with people who are caught in religion. And until next time, may God's grace be with you.